that was the first time I was ever on a show that was so star generated. You know, before everything else, it was like everything had its place. But on the Cosby show, it was Bill Cosby. It was all Bill Cosby, all the time Bill Cosby. And it was very interesting because it was almost like stepping into the Bill Cosby universe. And, um, <clears throat> and Jay uh, Sandwich was the director. I knew Jay from the Golden Girls. And Jay, of course, is another television legend. He directed so many wonderful things. And um, it was interesting to see him work with Bill Cosby because my training had always been like the director was king and you don't question the director. And Bill Cosby did question the director and he would even move things around. And that to me was so appalling. I couldn't believe he was doing that. But Jay Sandrich thought that he was a genius and so he didn't mind it at all. And, and Bill was another person who would just go off script. And the cast was very young. You know, he had those five kids. And they were amazing. They were so, first of all, they were all very professional. And we would be shooting, and suddenly it was just like doing live television. He would start going someplace where that wasn't blocked. And Jay Sandrich would just take it from there. I mean, he would just have those cameras going, and everybody would just be off the cuff. And then somewhere he would find his way back in, and you would never know the difference because the cast would never, they would just find a way back in and just continue. Even the littlest one. Even the littlest one. And it was amazing to watch. But as a writer, how is that when you've written a script? <laughs> it was not fun. <laughs> we used to call ourselves the script indicators because... They, they threw scripts out a lot on that show, too. So on, you would have a read-through, and then they would throw the script out. We would work seven days on that show. Uh, we shot in Brooklyn, but we all lived in Manhattan. So we, had a car, we would come out by car. Um, our, our production offices were over a deli that stunk. <laughs> and then our... our um, our soundstage was down the street. So logistically, it was a very difficult show. And it really made me appreciate Los Angeles and Hollywood because this city is set up for production and for getting things done. And that city was not at that time. So that was very, very difficult. And then things were thrown out a lot. So we would have to write on the weekends, and we wouldn't want to go out to Brooklyn on the weekends, so Carsey and Warner would rent hotel suites at different hotels in Manhattan. I was the only woman on the staff. And so we would go to these hotels, and I remember we would order room service, and people would come in, and they would see this woman with like, you know, 10 guys, and it would be like, what's going on in there? And we used to order food from this, it was a steak company in a van. <laughs> and they would deliver us steaks and potatoes. And we would just, you just kept writing. You just kept writing, you know. And he would throw stuff out, and you just rewrite it. And we would go to meetings at his house. And it was, it was bone crushing. It was seven days a week, unbelievable hours. And talk about it from the beginning. Like, let's take a script. Would he... Would he be involved from, okay, here's the idea for this episode? Sometimes he would. Sometimes he would come in. Well, for instance, the oldest girl on the show, there, there, that character wasn't there in the beginning. If you watch the pilot, he doesn't have that many kids. And then suddenly, but he met this very impressive young actress somewhere, and he just came to the writers and said, put another kid in. And so that's, he would do that a lot of the times. He would say, oh, I met such and such. I want you to write a show around that. Or I had an idea, and then that would be what we did. A lot of the ideas came from him. The yes. tone of the humor always came from him. That was his baby. And when we would do notes, he was the only person, um, he was the only person who gave notes. And nobody gave him notes. <laughs> I think sometimes Jay would give him a few, but in the dressing room. His comedy is very, 
you know, he would take very small things. And I remember for me, my background was that you have to have some conflict and you have to have some flaws. And so I would pitch a story. I would say, okay, so Claire and Cl Cliff have an argument. And they go, no, they don't argue. And then it would be, well, so-and-so tells a lie. No, they don't tell lies. So it was hard because everything that comedy w was to me was not what they were doing. It would be like, you know, Cliff can't find his sweater, you know, <laughs> act break. <laughs> and to me, that wasn't really, you know, how I learned to tell stories. So it was very different. How important was it for there to be educational value to the stories that were told? It was very important to Bill Cosby. He really uh, is a very educated person himself, and I think he wanted to show uh, an African-American very educated person. He's a person who loves jazz. If you watch those shows, you'll learn a lot about jazz history, a lot about black history. I think it was very important to him and very important uh, to the success of the show, I think. That's one of the things that was really great about it.